Hello, good morning, happy Saturday. Let me just mute uh, camera here. All right, I'm just gonna do a quick sound check here on my side. All right, good morning, everybody. Yep, we are good to go. All right, happy Saturday, everybody. Uh, for me, it's a long weekend. So it's Easter weekend. So I have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. All right. So uh, a lot of busy work here, both uh, business wise and family wise. So a lot of moving pieces. Right. Um, I'm pretty sure everybody else. Right. Is on the same boat. So Saturday morning, always a good day to take care of business. Always a good day to uh, get some education. Right. And of course, a lot of practice. All right. So everything that we learn, the best way to learn is always to to actually absorb information, practice it, and then repeat it over and over and over and over and over. All right, today's episode, very, very uh, jam-packed informational day today, okay? It's always fun when we're talking about patches. So today, as you can see here on the screen, uh, on my right, okay, these are the three ways that we're going to do patches today. Uh, in reality, there's always a thousand ways to do patches, okay? Uh, patches is very, um, it's like a very scrappy type project, okay? Because there's no one way to do it, okay? Especially if you have scraps, right? If you have extra uh, supplies that you, that you want to uh, use efficiently, okay? Patches is probably the best way to use up extra scraps, anything that you have kind of laying around. All right, but sometimes we kind of we we sometimes have to uh, improvise and kind of tweak stuff around. Okay, uh, but today I'm gonna just I'm just gonna go over um, three of the most popular type ways to do to do patches. Okay, there's always the uh, the traditional way. Okay, nothing's really traditional because nobody does it the same way. But for for us here, the way we do it. Uh, we have the very basic way that we do it. We have uh, a scrappy way to do it. Okay, so very useful if you have extra scraps. All right, and then we have the very efficient, clean uh, way to do it. All right, so everything, everything runs smooth as long as you prepare everything smoothly in the in the software. Okay, so that's kind of what I want to talk about today. All right, and I want to get I want to get straight into uh, the the patches right away because I already know two hours. Okay, two hours fly by like this. All right, I, I mean, uh, by the time we're done every day, right? Every Saturday, right? Two hours just fly by. All right, uh, let's start off the morning by saying good morning. All right, Bevy Jean, good morning. She's gonna have to catch us on the replay. She got a uh, family. Uh, she's going to go visit family. All right. So tell you it's a busy weekend. Good morning, Janet. All right. Good morning, Carlos. All right. So handmade creations. Good morning to everybody. Good morning, Legine. All right. Good morning, Alicia and Barb. Good morning. All right. From Minnesota. I know it's cold because it's it's springtime, but it's already 30 degrees here in northern Illinois. So I'm pretty sure in Minnesota it's even colder. And of course, Demps enjoying that sunny Florida. All right, I was there probably like two, three years ago and I know how hot it is over there. All right, good morning from Quebec, Canada. All right, I'm pretty sure it's even colder over there. And from sunny Cal Southern California. All right, got my brother here. Good morning, I know it's early, West Coast, California. Southern California, what time is it? Six, right? 6 a.m. All right. Leanne, good morning from Florida. All right. Enjoying that good weather over there. And Patty Glover. All right. All right. So let's go ahead. Let's start. Uh, before we start going into uh, different ways to, to do patches, I do want to go over some of the materials that we're going to talk about today. Okay. Materials is always a popular question. Where do you get your stuff? Where do you buy your stuff? Okay. And I would say there's always four. Let me put away this one right here.
add to stream. All right. All right. Let me see if my audio came back. All right. I'm back. I'm back on track. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, when I minimize this window here, uh, my audio doesn't like that. All right. So we'll keep this window open right here. All right. So what I was saying was, uh, before we get started into uh, the patches, I just want to go over some of the suppliers. Okay, uh, where to buy your where you buy your product is always important. Okay, and that's always the number one question that we get. Where do we buy this? Where do we get that? Okay, I don't only have one place that I go to. Okay, I do have my go-to places such as um, Tool USA, All Stitch, Ganold. Okay, but of course there's other places, and you always have to be ready with other suppliers, just in case a certain supplier, especially nowadays where stuff is sold out, uh, you have to be ready to uh, to improvise and go with, uh, with different suppliers, right? And But you gotta know if that if that supply, what you're buying for is actually what you're looking for, all right? So real quick, I just wanna go uh, through some vendors that I use. All right, I'll keep this window open. All right, so of course we have uh, Ganold. Let me see if I pull this up. All right. So the stuff that we're going to work with today. All right. The stuff that we're going to work with today is from here, from Ganold. Some of the stuff, uh, such as, let me see, uh, this this water soluble. All right. Uh, everything that we work with today, I'm going to put it down in the description. All right. So you you can see what we're working with. All right. But we are going to work with this. Okay. So when I when I use this, this is what I'm talking about. All right. Water soluble. You could get this in Ganold. You could get it anywhere. All right. Also, all stitch. OK, all stitch for those who who love all stitch. I like all stitch also. OK, but the one we're using today. All right. So uh, it is Solvi. So I'm pretty sure a lot of people are familiar with Solvi. You've used Solvi, right? The lighter. But this is the thicker. So it's saying that it's twice as thick, 40 mil. All right. There's also 80 mil. Okay, actually, I have the 80 mil thickness, 80 mil. Yeah, this is 80 mils. All right, uh, this is the same product as Solvi, except it is twice as thick. It is off. All right, yeah, because the one I have is 80 mil. So, all right, so this here, you're going to see when I use it in action. All right, very useful. Um, all right, let me go back to where we're at. Uh, all right. So vendor wise, OK, I'm going to link it down in the description. Everything that we talk about, the three methods um, we're going to talk about. Um, we're going to use that the water soluble. You're going to see how convenient, how easy it is just to kind of make everything look nice and clean. All right. But overall, I'm going to keep it very basic, uh, just using Twill, OK, Twill from Twill USA. But of course, you can get them at stalls. You can buy Twills uh, right everywhere you go. You, you could pretty much get old. OK. Uh, Usually it's good to try out different vendors because sometimes they have different types of class of twill. All right. Uh, I would say 90% of the time, all the twill usually looks the same. OK, but the go to one where you always want to start off with is a tackle twill. OK, tackle twill is probably the most popular twill for patch making and just for applique in general. All right. So uh, let's go ahead and let's start with the first way. OK, so let me pull up my. Um, my software here all right um so just real quick to go over some stuff right here uh let's see all right let me see bam bam all right all right all right uh this is the this is I, it started with this just here okay just romero threads uh something that i made on illustrator all right uh, I forgot what the font of this was called, but it's pretty clean. I like it. All right. Um, now, this is very important here with patches, okay? Uh, we always get the question of can this design be in a patch or can that design be in a patch, all right? Anything in this world design-wise could be made into a patch, all right? Anything could be made into a patch, all right? If you can embroider it, you can turn whatever design you have, you can design it into a patch. For example, here I had my... I had my words here, okay? I had my font, okay? And all it, the only thing it takes for you to make a patch is to put a border around it. 
that really what makes it a patch. That's all it is. Okay, so it's nothing special to make it a patch. You just have to be able to put a. All you have to do is be able to put a uh, a border around it. Okay, and then real quick. Uh, usually all the softwares you have. So I'm on my left hand side with basic shapes. Okay, you have. You should be. Able, you should have access to different shapes. Okay, like let's say you wanna you wanna find a specific shape that you wanna go with. Okay, let me see if I find one. Uh, let's say like, hold on, this one looked pretty cool. All right, let's say you just want to build a shape here. Okay, uh, let's make this. Let me just show you real quick. All right, all you need to do is make it into a uh, sand stitch. Okay, and that automatically converts it into a patch right there. All right, as long as we follow the rules that we're going to talk about right now. All right, you can it could all be made into a patch. All right. The question is, OK, some of the small details you got to worry about. OK, how big you want your your sand stitches to be. OK, so for example, here, if I if I were to be using my sample here, OK, three millimeters, I would say three millimeters is kind of like your minimum. All right. That's pretty small for a uh, for a patch. OK, uh, I usually like them like real thick. OK, the, the sand stitches which is which is kind of like what what the uh, customer is going to be holding right when you're holding your patch you're actually holding the outsides of it all right i i think a uh, between 4 4.5 um millimeters all right so notice how much thicker it got right here all right or even a 4 okay 4 is pretty cool all right so as long as you can do this, okay, as long as you could turn anything into a patch, okay, you can always turn anything into a patch, any design, just put it within a closed, a closed shape, and you have created a patch, all right? So let's go back to my sample here, all right? Uh, the first way, okay, so number the first way to create a patch is just to, to do it the traditional way, is just to set up your, uh, your fabric, okay, which we're going to talk about in a bit. Set up your fabric and uh, stitch it out without having to stop the machine, without having to do any cuts. Okay, so for this example, okay, let's say this, we have one design. Let's say we want to, you would create your one patch. Okay, this is the way I do it. All right, of course, there's different ways to do it. All right, group it. You can group it. Then once they're grouped, depending how many patches you want, okay, you could just copy paste, okay, or you could do three right here, All right? Depending how big your hoop is, okay, then you could um, you could space them out evenly here, okay, and then do that again, All right? Just depending how how big your hoop is, okay, and then what you would want to do is just fix or strain out the, the specific um, sequence that you want it to run, all right? So for example, let's say we had a hoop this big, it would have been, you could see down on the bottom, width 11.2, height 5.6, okay? So you might be able to use that um, the eight by 13 hoop here, all right? All right, that's just setting up, right? This is just traditional way to do it. Uh, Nothing fancy. We're just gonna stitch it out. So let me just show you. Um, I want to show you an example. All right. So here, let me see. Oh, let me pull this up bigger. All right, all right. So let me just show you. So this is just a sample of what I'm talking about. So we're before we started. I went ahead and I stitched it out. Okay. Let's see if we get it. All right. So I stitched out the Romero threads. So what you in this situation, what you would have done. Okay. And my latest video on patches, this is the way I did it, right? I did it like this. And then I put the adhesive on the back side. Okay. And then we cut them. All right. So I don't want to spend too much time on just the traditional way, because I am going to link the video of all the details on that. But in this situation, 
we just went ahead. Okay, we have two pieces of cutaway. Okay, so just want to show you the cutaway that we use, right? Cutaway. This is from All Stitch. All right, All Stitch eight by eight. All right, we placed the uh, thing. Okay, very basic. This. Okay, so we just placed that the two pieces of cutaway. Okay, and then you place the the twill, right? And then bam, you hoop, right? Ready to go. All right, so very basic way. The only thing on this one, all right, the thing to remember is when you're cutting it, okay, you gotta, you gotta, we'll cut it in a bit. We'll cut it a little later, all right? But we definitely don't want to cut our sand stitches here, all right? So here in this more traditional way, you 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 have to be careful cutting your stitches because now you are prone to cut stitches. All right, that's the only drawback with this way doing it like this. Okay, where you have to be um, you got to have a lot of practice on cutting your stitches. All right, now you also have the option if you want to put the adhesive backing on it. All right, but if you don't need adhesive backing, if you're gonna stitch it on, okay, you can just cut it from here. All right, so. Uh, yeah, I'll cut it in a bit. All right, so I got my scissors right here. I'll cut it in a bit. But what I want to show you here, okay, I actually want to spend the most time on this second method. All right, and that's using this, the water soluble. Okay, always the fun way and always the clean way to do it. All right, so to do it this way, all right, and then this is my final outcome. This is how it looks. So as you can see, let's see. Uh, let me see. Uh, let me fix my, uh, let me just fix my focus. All right, so as you can see here, clean, right? There was, I still have the plastic behind it too. All right, but this way, very popular way, and you're gonna see why. Okay, so I wanna spend the most time today doing this method. All right, but as you can see, our clean, our sides, they look very clean. All right, all right. So what I'm going to do? Okay, I'm just gonna line it up here and cut a quick piece. All right, but actually, we're not on this piece yet. All right, this is step two. All right, step one, okay, is to actually cut our twill. All right, so we're gonna grab our twill, okay, just cut it. All right, so we, we, we hoop it the traditional way, okay, we hoop it the traditional way, but what we're gonna, we're going to stitch it out and then we're gonna cut out we're going to cut it out before we, we set our sand stitches. All right, set that up. Okay, just make sure. Nice and flat. All right, so let me go to the software real quick to show you what we're going to do. All right. Let me see. Oh. Uh... See, and then, oh, all right. We're going vinyl, okay. All right, let me show you real quick so you could kind of follow along when I'm stitching this out the game plan. All right, so, um, what we're going to do first, hi to others, we're going to stitch out whatever's whatever your design is first. You're gonna design your your design first, okay? So um, we're not worried about the, the borders yet. We just want to stitch. So on top of it, you see me put the twill and the two pieces of cutaway. So I want to do the actual design. So whatever your design is, this is where your design goes first, okay? Then after I do my design, okay? After I do my design, I'm going to run a cut stitch. All right. So here, right after my design comes. I'm going to run a cut stitch, all right? And then my cut stitch, the only thing 
uh, special about this. I made it a 2.0, okay, length 2.0, just a little smaller, just to give it a cut. You could, some people do a triple stitch, all right, but here it's not very necessary, okay. Um, 2.2.0 as my running stitch, okay. So once again, it's going to say Romero threads. It's going to put this cut stitch, okay. Once this cut stitch uh, comes on, I'm going to take off the hoop and I'm going to cut it. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to take it. I'm going to completely take it off the hoop and I'm going to put it on the and I'm going to cut it out. All right. So you'll see when I do it, what I'm talking about. And then that's when I'm going to place the, the solvy. Okay, then I'm going to place the solvy. I'm going to hoop the solvy and now I'm going to continue. It's going to run a placement stitch. All right. So this blue one, that's the placement stitch. It's going to tell me where to put that, where to put my that piece that I just cut on top. Okay, and then once that's set, then I'll set that uh, the border on it. Okay, so unhide. All right, this one here is gonna hold on. Is gonna is like a tag down. Okay, it's gonna it's gonna tag down my final stitch. And if you notice, I brought it in a little bit more. Okay. Um, and then the final sand stitch here unhide all right so that's how that's how it's going to go with that one all right and then if we uh here just you know for time purposes okay uh we're going to do one but of course if if you were to do a big gang run okay of course you would just copy and paste um your stitches okay you would just do all this a bunch of times All right, just like this. And then the biggest thing is just to uh, get your sequencing all correctly, all right? Because uh, in this situation, maybe I would want to do uh, Romero threads all first and then run the cut stitch next, cut them out, and then put the sand stitches, all right? All right, so let's go ahead and let's stitch this one out. This one's always the more funner way, more popular way to do it just because it's very clean. All right. All right, let me check let me check some of these questions here. All right, good morning. Looks like we have a uh, pretty big crew today. All right, a lot of good mornings. All right, good morning everybody. All right, bam bam. Let me see. All right, can't tell much. Let me see. All right. All right. Good morning, Austin. Good morning. Thank you for all the videos you have done. Can't tell you how much of a help you've been with my learning machine. Yeah, yeah. All right. Appreciate that. Yeah. It's all about practice. Okay. The more we practice, the more we get it. The more, you know, expert level we become. All right. Uh, a lot of good mornings. All right. Good question here. Why do I use two stabilizers? Uh, patches. I'm uh, I'm used to using two 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 stabilizers it, it just prevents it it two reasons all right it prevents it from it kind of crumbling okay sometimes you could that twill could start crumbling within itself uh second is uh just give it some uh, good thickness to the patch all right just so the patch won't be so flimsy okay uh and then it just kind of holds the patch together especially when you're putting that last sand stitch all right it just keeps everything nice and tight you can also, so another thing, you can also spray it, okay? Uh, I'm not spraying it right now because our hoop is pretty small, okay? But once you start making big gang runs of patch, uh, you might want to spray some some adhesive spray, okay? Just to really keep everything locked in, okay? So I'm actually going to use the stabilizer on this one here. You'll see when I use it, all right? Um yeah, some some people some people use uh, tearaway. I've never been a big fan of tearaway. Uh, I just I'm just used to I just like it for it for the stitches to be locked on with the with the cutaway. All right, all right. Let's go ahead and let's continue. Okay. Uh, so now I hoop this. All right. Let's take it to the machine. All right. Um, let's see. Bam. All right, hold on. 
I got to switch cameras. So let me keep it on the software real quick. Uh, I'm going to let, while well, I'm changing cameras to the GoPro, I'm going to let this play for a second so you see how it's going to look. All right. Let me just slow it down. So this is how it's going to run right now. All right. Give me one sec. I'm just going to change cameras. All right, here goes my cam. Let me throw away all these strings right here. All right, cool. Let's go ahead. Let's hook this up. All right, we got a good view right there. All right, let me select. Uh, so since I'm working with this hoop, working hoop C, all right, just reset it. I'm going to look for right, final. Then I'll do a quick. All right, just do a quick. Um, Quick trace, looks good. All right, got my colors, five, four, bam. So right now I'm just gonna do the design. All right, let that run for a sec. All right, so this way is, uh, it's, uh, some people call it uh, the mar uh, marine vinyl, okay, marine vinyl. I think you could find it in Joann's. Like, if you're in a pinch and you got to go to Joann's to do this, okay. Uh, let's see. All right. Let me fix the camera. All right, so it's going to do the actual design first, and then it's going to do a cutaway. All right. So right now it's going to do the design first, then it's going to do the cutaway. All right, and then after after it does that cutaway, then I'm going to take it off the machine, then I'm going to cut it. Okay. All right, let's see. Um, uh, then Marisa, uh, have you used the patch software from a bit in Brilliance? If so, what's your thought? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't used it. Um, but no matter what it is, you can always set your own. You can program your own uh, stitches, right? You don't really need to have uh, automatic features for patches. Um, I think what they do have, they have the Merrily. Right to to give it that nice border, uh, to give it uh, right just so your sand borders won't look just plain. Okay, you can make it uh, give it a a marrow look, so uh, uh, a design border. Okay, uh, the only thing with the design border, okay, looks very nice. It's gonna add more stitches. Okay, so if if your customer does uh, request a marrowly a marrow, it's called marrow. The the nice uh, looking borders around it. Okay, if they do request one, you could use uh, a software like that, and just make sure you charge extra because you're going to introduce more stitches. All right. 
All right, this is always a good question. Good morning, Janice. Janice, what marketing tools are you using to get your work out there? I'm on Facebook, but I have a smaller amount of friends. Unfortunately, that's not. Gen All right. Always good question, all right? This is always one of my favorite topics too, right? Uh, bus the business side of embroidery. I would say this, okay? This is my personal opinion, all right? Uh, might not be a popular opinion. But to get customers, the last person, the last person you want to go to is family. All right. If you're going to do something for family, I would say it's more to uh, more as a hookup just to kind of get your just to kind of get the artwork out there. OK, but to generate traffic, to make money. OK, uh, I would say you would have to. Uh, the ones that where you're really going to make your money is with businesses. OK, businesses are really the companies that are going to spend money okay they don't really hesitate okay if you're real good they don't hesitate uh paying out okay paying out and charging what something is worth okay uh, if you're if you're kind of focused with family if you're focused like generating business with family all right it's more like hookups all right hey can you hook me up which is always cool right it's always cool to do that you could also test stuff if you're working with family then you could test new uh, new products or new techniques, right? You could test stuff out like that. But to get the word out there, I would say um, I would say um, focus on businesses. And once you get that one good business, like continue going hard with them, because then the word of mouth spreads from there. All right. And once once you get the word of mouth, right? It's like a it's like an engine. Like once that word of mouth starts running okay it kind of works on its own where we really haven't had to uh, market or do anything because word of mouth just comes just comes in All right so always always a good um, good topic I do want to make a, a a a session just about talking about different ways to market and to kind of get the name out there all right but for us for for us just Word of mouth is probably the biggest way and focusing on companies, All right? All right, always good question. All right, and then Barb, uh, good morning, Barb. Marisa, the Merrily patch border was designed with the help of Jeff Foo. Jeff Foo Embroidery has a set of shaped borders using, yep. So uh, Jeff Fuller, he has, I have, I, I have his, um, his uh, Mero stitch too. Okay, I think I, I've bought from like three different digitizers. They're they're Mero, they're Merrill borders. Okay. Um, so Jeff Fuller has one. He has different shapes, or you could request. You can always email him if you have a special request. And then the in Brilliance also. Uh, I think the in Brilliance the in Brilliance was designed by uh, Eric Campbell. So he was the one that that's working with that one. All right. So uh, the Merrily border. You'll see it different digitizers like they'll they'll do their own tweak. OK, they'll do their own tweak and uh, it all starts with a motif. OK, it all, if you design your motif, you could kind of design your own um, your own border. But yeah, there are some very good pre-made ones. All right. It's all about testing and seeing which ones kind of fits better. And. Uh, all right. So, okay, so right now it's about to complete the design right now. All right, it's about to complete the design. And then once it does this, let me go full screen. All right, now it's going to do this cut stitch. All right, so that's that two millimeter. All right, now what we're going to do, we're going to take this off the who. Okay, so let me move the camera. Okay, I'll take this off the hoop, right? You don't want to shift anything. You don't want to touch anything. All right, actually, I'll just keep this here. I'll just keep it on the GoPro.
All right, now you take this off, right? Take this off. Move this to the side. Okay. Now, this is where we got to be careful. All right. Now we're going to cut it. Okay. We're going to cut it. So I got my scissors right here. All right. Uh, what you don't want to do, you don't want to cut the actual cut, the, the line. All right. All right. So you just want to. Cutting it very tight here. So here, as you notice, like I'm using a lot of, I'm using a lot of twill here, like in a real world situation. Of course, we would gang run all this stuff. All right, but just so, since uh, time, okay, we don't want to go ahead and stitch out 12 patches this morning. So we're just following straight down this line. Getting close to this cut line. All right, I do have a 4.5 millimeter run stitch. All right, so we are very good uh, coverage wise. All right. Take your time. There might be some fraying. You'll see fraying here. I'll, I'll tell you what I do if I get any fray. Let's get that curve. All right. If, so I got a little piece of fray here. Of course, you could always just clean it up here. All right. Doesn't really matter right now because a lot of this is going to get covered. All right. But just in case you get some real big frame. Okay. All right. We got it cut. Let me see. Okay. Now what we're going to do. Okay. Bring back our hoop. Bring back our. All right. And with that piece that we cut. Bam. And what I like to do, just a little something that I do, just to make sure this is nice and tight. I'll put a piece of tape right here, all right, just so I could pull this along. All right, then take this off. All right, nice and tight. All right, now we're going to. We're going to put this back on the hoop. All right, so let me get situated right here. All right, we are back. So I haven't touched anything, right? So make sure nothing gets shifted. Okay, now let's see where we're at. Okay, now what's going to happen is. I'm going to put down the placement stitch. Okay. I actually forgot one step, but let me just show you the placement stitch right now. Okay. I'm going to put down this placement stitch. I slowed it down right now because sometimes it's, it's so thin right here that sometimes it might not catch the bobbin. Okay. So right now, I'm putting down that placement stitch. All right, now I know where to put my 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 patch. All right, but before that, I forgot one quick thing. So let's go back to the to the table here. All right, so I gotta make it I gotta make it sticky back here, just so it could lay nice and tight. So let me show you what I'm going to do real quick. All right, so I got my adhesive spray. Let me grab that. Okay, of course, I want to put a little, I'm going to put a little protective, okay, 
little protective mat just so I don't spray on my table. Okay, so you just want to make sure this is flat. Also, if you have any um, long strands like right here, any long tie-ins, you could just cut them off right here. All right. All right, now, all right, let me make sure we're good here. All right, and we got this. All right, everybody's familiar with 505 spray? Okay, probably the best spray there is for this type of work. Okay, just, okay, give it a nice spray. We're good to go. Now, okay, now I'm going to take off that hoop. I'm going to take it back off. All right, you see it here? I got my placement stitch. I usually like to take it off. You don't have to take off the hoop. I prefer to take it off just so you can get a good view. All right, so you just want to be right on that placement stitch okay and then since we have the surface of the table you could just push down and this thing is locked in all right so looks like we're good just verify all right now let's take it to the machine All right, let's see. Yep, looks like we're good. All right, put it back in. All right. Now, okay, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do the um, tag down stitch. Okay, so the tag down stitch is running a little inside and then it's gonna run that sand stitch. I see that this corner, I cut it pretty sharp. I should have made it a little rounded, a little bit more rounder, but that's fine. It should still cover. Uh, we do have a 4.5 millimeter, but let me see. Usually corners will stand out. All right, so all we gotta do is push start, continue. Okay. So it's doing the tag down stitch. All right, tag down stitch is grabbing it real good down there. Now it's gonna transition to the sand stitch. Okay, so now it's gonna do a, uh, a double zigzag underlay. All right, so yeah, it, it, it covered that, that corner that I was looking at. So let me speed it up. All right, now it's going to go back and do the other part of the zigzag underlay. All right. So we'll let this run here. And of course, if you're doing patches, you're doing this on a larger scale, right? You're 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 gonna put down like anywhere between 12, 15 patches, like in the big hoop. All right. Uh, all right, Marisa, good question right here. All right, I've seen people use trash bags or hard plastic liner for houses. What's your thought? Uh, yes, I've seen people do it too. Uh, it works for them. Okay, so if it works for them, it should be good. I just like to buy. Uh, I like to buy supplies that are made for the actual job. So I've never been in a pinch, right, where I've had to use trash bags or anything. And I think I would only use a trash bag if somebody called me at midnight needing some patches like right away, and they were willing to pay. But other than that, I just buy I buy stuff that's made for uh, the actual job. 
but I mean, yeah, especially if you're gonna do a lot of a lot of runs, like, I mean, I'll rather I'll rather buy something that was specifically made for um uh, for patches. But I'm pretty sure it could work. Okay, I'm pretty sure it could work because I've seen the best of the best, right? Expert uh expert embroider is doing that, so right should be all right. All right. Um. And then Lejean, okay, interested how it all gets lined up. Hold on. My computer. All right, uh, everything, it was just lined up in the software. So I had, I had gone step by step, seeing how it was gonna go on. All right, all right. And then you saw it, right? All right. Then you saw it. Yeah. All right. Barb, uh, Liliana from Embroidery Now uses bags in the black plastic used on houses. I bought some bags to try it out. I normally use it with badge masks. Yeah. 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 That's what I'm saying. I've seen the best of the best, right? Expert embroiders. I've seen expert digitizers use bags. So it must work. I just never use it. I just always have. I always make sure I buy all this stuff here. All right. All right. Now, this is where the cool stuff happens, right? Let's go ahead. Let's go full screen. All right. So it completed our border. Okay. Let's transition to the work table. All right. Now we got this, right? And now all we got to do right all we got to do is punch it out okay punch this out all, right, all you're doing is punching it out okay look at that it's like zero cleaning necessary all right zero cleaning you probably got some thread here from the tie-in tie out all right uh, i would recommend if you do cut these tie-in tie outs to uh, just hit it with the with the lighter, okay. All right, but other than that, good to go. All right, now you have the plastic back here, the plastic from the from this, right, from the water soluble. Okay, so let me show you how I take it off. All right, I think some people keep it. I don't. I don't keep this plastic thing here because uh, I just don't do it. It is water soluble, so you can probably try to wet it off. Okay, but you can just find like a little sweet spot right here, and I just get a little cut here. Find a little cut, right, without cutting the the underlay down here. Okay, all you need to do is make a little small, little small hole right here, and then and then with your sim reaper, sim seam reaper ripper, right? Just carefully, right? Just tear a little hole so you can work with it. All right, once you got that, all right, once you got the hole, now this part's just easy to cut it off. All right, I'm just... Sometimes the, the glue, the glue that we put wants to stick on. Okay. But pull it till they get to the sides. Okay, now you could just pull it off. Okay, it just comes off like that. Even though this pulls off real easily, you still want to be careful and not just yank it out. Okay, so this came off pretty straightforward. And then if you have any of those tie-ins. All right, it's just those. 
All right, everything looks clean. All right, so let's take a look at this. All right, so it looks clean. Best thing about it is these edges. All right, so this is ready, right? Ready with not too much effort, right? Whereas in this situation, the traditional way, right? The traditional way, you would have to cut it and get it real close and then clean it up with the lighter. All right, so let me see. Yeah, so let me see, real clean. So I'm gonna put these on some shirts that I have, on some uh, Carhartt shirts, right? Romero threads. Then you could see the the borders. I'm trying to give you a good view on that. Let's see. I get you a good view. All right. You get different angles. All right. It looks very good. All right. All right. Let's transition. Let me know what you think if you like that that way of doing it, or if anybody has tried it that way. All right, uh, let's see. What is the clear material? All right. All right, what is the clear material you are using? Where were you? Where you? So that was the the Ultra Solvi. So in the beginning of the program, let me see if I could bring a, oh, right here. It's this one from Ganold. Okay, so that's the way I started off the show was uh, kind of showing you the materials that I was using. This is uh, water soluble. Big thing here because you could buy this different locations. It's not only here in Ganold. Okay, uh, is this is 80 mils. All right. So if you go to Allstitch, if you go anywhere, all right, Madeira thread everywhere. Okay, just look for the Solvi. Uh, the 80 mil. Okay, 80 mil. All right. Very good uh, material to have, as you as you saw. Very clean. All right. Um. And then, uh, see, uh, and then Barb likes the Ganold also, right? For some reason, uh, Barb and, and us, we always have like a lot of the similar uh, products that we use, right? Uh, I like using that because it always works, right? If I'm not, it's not like it works, it always works. So, as you saw, like I just punched that out very. Easy. All right. Um, Janice, wow, well, clever to using a running stitch as a cutting line, then placing the patch directly onto it, allowing the soundboard. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, one thing that I want to show you real quick on this, okay? One thing that, let me get out of here. All right, let me show you something real quick that was, that's very important here. If you are using this, this method. Uh, hold on. Hold on, my mouse kind of froze on me. All right, so we're here on the software. Okay, so let's let's talk about this cut. Uh, the cut line is here. So let me zoom in here, okay? So you can see the edge. So you see what happens. So here, I don't know if you can see this cut line, but it's kind of, it's highlighted right here. Okay, let me hide these. Well, no, I got to keep them to show you. All right, this here was the placement stitch. No, cut line. Okay, so notice, let me see. Yeah, you can see it here, right? It's like uh, shaded, a little purplish. All right. Um, cut line, cut line, placement stitch. And then this was the tack down stitch. So notice how this tack down stitch, right, goes a little bit in. Actually, I could do this right here. I could hide all, hide others. All right. So here, okay, this light blue, okay, this is important here. This, this, the green is right below the light blue, okay? So let me show you this light blue. This is the placement stitch. So this is where I put my actual badge back, okay, the patch. I put it here. And then this dark blue, 
Okay, notice it's on the inside of the patch. This was my tag down stitch. Okay, so as you can see, I, I got to really push it inside more than usual because what happens is when you cut it, okay, when you cut this, when you cut that, that patch out of the twill. All right, let me kind of bring myself in a bit because I got to show you. So when you cut it, right, it, it was nice and tight on the magnetic hoop or any hoop, right? You cut it, and what happens is it kind of shrinks a bit, okay? Believe it or not, when, when you remove that, that hoop, okay, it kind of like takes a little breather and settles in a bit. So that tag down stitch that I put here, this dark blue, so let me show you again this. I got to bring it in a little bit more than normal, okay, if that kind of makes sense, all right? Sometimes it takes trial and error, okay, to get that tag down stitch to come down very perfectly down, all right? But once you got it, then you're good to go, all right? And then let me bring in these, this uh, running stitch, unhide, okay? And then you put down 4.5 4 millimeters to cover everything, all right? So it is usually, it, it, it is easy as a cleanup, but just as a setup, you gotta make sure you're you're experimenting it. And um, you gotta make sure you're experimenting it, practice, uh, not practice, but do samples. And then once you got it down good, then you do your whole production, okay? You don't wanna do a full production without testing uh, your tag down stitches. All right, now, so that was method number two, okay? That was method number two, all right? And then uh, appreciate that, Jaylene, okay? Uh, thank you very much, all right? Uh, Pam, happy Easter, all right? Happy Easter to everybody. Uh, I'm very excited because it's a four-day weekend, all right? So hold on, let me make this quick announcement real quick. All right, happy Easter, right, everybody? Uh, four-day weekend for me, right? Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, all right? So I'm planning right after I'm done here, I'm planning to knock out uh, anywhere between three to four videos from today, this afternoon, Sunday, Monday, all right? That way, I'm just putting stuff out, all right? Because I always have ideas. I have a notebook full of ideas and all sorts of cool stuff. So I finally want to be able to put it out there, all right? So definitely happy uh, Easter, right? Because we get uh, Saturday. It's all about business, especially if you have a home embroidery business. If you have a, a full-time job, then Saturday, right, is your go-to days, all right? And then we got family, right? Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, it's all about family, okay? So a uh, busy week that we have this week, all right? All right, uh, blah, blah, blah. What do you put on the back to make it stick to the shirt or whatever? Okay, uh, yes, so we have the adhesive, right? So my last patch video, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to link it here. Okay, I'm gonna link it here on the on the description as soon as we're done. I made a video of how I go about putting the, the, the adhesive on the back and how to go about ironing, right? Using your home iron, okay? Uh, always a good question, all right? I just kind of wanted to show today how to actually create the patches, all right? And then, uh, good morning, Sunrise Tactical Gear. You have your machine dialed in, looks like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, once you get your machine dialed in, I mean, that's it. You're good to go until, you know. But the thing is, you, you'll have it dialed in, but you're constantly making tweaks, okay? Because different different fabric, different designs, all right? Sometimes your settings kind of don't match. It don't look good. So you kind of, you're always looking and messing with dials, all right? Uh, all right. Bam, bam. All right, good morning, CC, Ceci. Great explanation. All right. Thank you very much, Barb. Put the thumbs up, right? Let's let YouTube know that we are in the house. We are learning today. All right. All right, we are one hour in. Let me uh, just go over the third way to do it. All right. Uh, this is a good question, all right, before we even go to the next one. Uh, good morning, Cedar. Uh, do you program the stop? So I just I just put color changes. I don't put uh, so when it does a color change, I have it on uh, on manual, so it'll stop after a color change, and then that way I could just take it off. 
but I don't stop it or I don't program it to uh, to do an offset so the machine goes out. Okay, I just pull it off. Since it's a flat, I don't really gotta worry about that. All right, all right, let's go with uh, version number two of how to make of how to make uh, patches, and this is what I call applique style. Okay, this one here is more like um, this one here is more like uh, scrappy type, right? If you if you have scraps or you want to make patches different color, you don't all you don't want all the patches to be the same color or you know something something out of the ordinary. Okay, I would recommend the applique style. So let me go full screen here. All right, so this one very straightforward. Okay, uh, we're going to let me just give you a preview. We're gonna put, we're gonna put, we're gonna hoop cutaway by itself, okay? We're gonna hoop the cutaway by itself and then put the twill on top of that, all right? And then we stitch it out, all right? And then this is the order. So let's look real quick at the replay of how it's going to look, all right? So of course, we're gonna put our design first. Okay, so it's gonna stitch out, bam, 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 bam. All right, then, it's going to it's going to do the 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 trace the cut line trace right so our let me go a little faster than this okay so this is going to be right and then we're going to cut it after that green one we're going to cut it and then it's going to do the the sand stitch all right so let me go ahead let me do this one all right uh Let's see if I have the camera. All right, let's go to the camera. All right, all right. Ah. Uh, so this one, applique way, is very good just when you have a lot of scraps, right? I know everybody got scraps of everything because we have boxes of scraps everywhere. Okay, so it's always good to have um, this method. To do patches all right um so everything starts with your underlay not your underlay your stabilizer okay you're just gonna hoop that bam bam okay so always check that we're good okay and what i'm going to do okay let's say for example right i have a I have a scrap like this here. Okay, I could just cut this. Mm. All right, that'll be my patch right there. Okay, let's see what it fit. Yeah, it'll fit. All right, so we go take it. Take it to the machine. All right, let me put in the correct design. Let me just reset the, all right, let me find the design. Um, applique. Okay, and then uh, I'm gonna put these files for free download just so you could, if you wanna just download them and just review them, push a replay on that and kind of see how, uh, like the different steps that I took. Okay, I'll put it up later today on the replay. All right, so right now, right, all I have is my, my uh, cutaway here. All right, and I'm just going to place my fabric, okay? There are different ways you could place your fabric, okay? You could put, uh, you could put uh, the sticky, right? The sticky stuff in the back. Right now, I'm just going to put it straight, just fabric by itself, all right? Uh, if this was a big run, okay, I might just put some of the, 
the not the permanent sticky uh, adhesive, all right, but the temporary just to sew it on, all right. But for right now, I'll just keep it like this. All right, I'm gonna let this run here. All right, let's talk about things to look out for if you're doing it this style, okay? This is like the applique way. Let me pull myself up right here. All right, things to look out for right here, okay? So notice all we have, all we have uh, hooped up is the, un, is, the, is the stabilizer. Our fabric, okay, has the potential to shift. Okay, has the potential to, if not designed correctly, okay, if we're all over the place with designs, has a uh, can tucker, all right, but I'm going, like, my design's going from left to right, so it's pushing that fabric towards the right, okay, so our, um, our uh, chances of puckering, very low, all right, since the but if you started like from the sides and worked your way to the middle and kind of went all over the place with a design, then this this style might not work. All right. All right. This here, very good question. All right. Let's see. Uh, Osman, how can I make Velcro back patches with this method? What would be the best practice for large? Okay. Very good question, right? Because Velcro is always highly in demand. I would say. If you want to go Velcro, you might have to get just a uh, post bed or a, or, a, or a regular sewing machine type to do the to do the Velcro. OK, uh, I know some people do it with the multi head. OK, it's possible. I just haven't done it like that. OK, but uh, I've seen uh, people do it very quick, very successfully just with the post bed type or like a. Uh, Different type of loan, uh, single needle, to do the, to do the Velcro. Okay, I don't really work too much with Velcro. Okay, I should because we we get we get it, we get asked about it to do it, but we just kind of don't do the Velcro as of right now, as of right now. But good question. All right. Uh, so adhesive type, there's always two types of adhesive. There's the permanent adhesive, which you're going to put on patches if you want to heat press them, you know, for them to lock in forever. Okay. And then you have your temporary adhesive where it, it would be used like in a situation like this right now. Okay. Something that you just want temporary adhesive. You want that fabric to kind of stick. Okay. Uh, ideally, you would want the fabric to be smaller than the hoop. Okay, right now it's a little bit bigger than the hoop. All right, so uh, it could cause to have some unnecessary um, gapping. All right, but uh, it's really not a problem right now. All right, but if you are going to do the applique style, kind of get the cut the fabric so it could be a little close to the size of your actual design. All right, and then uh, so it's gonna do. It's gonna do this part, all right? So let me let it run, and then let me get something else prepared. All right, and then in this example, we are not going to take off the hoop, okay? We are not gonna unhoop our patch. We're gonna keep it inside, we're gonna cut it, while it's still in the hoop. Okay. Then I always recommend if you're ever going to get close, right? If you're ever going to get close to there to have some of these, uh, some of these uh, chopsticks, right? They look like chopsticks. But if you ever got to flan anything out, right? You never want to put your finger in there. 
Okay. Sometimes you gotta like plan stuff out. Okay. Not we really don't have that problem right now. Okay. But if you ever have to plan stuff out, if you're doing it applique style. So right now my design, since it's moving from left to right, it's pushing a lot of that fabric to the side. All right, let's see. All right, we got a good question right here. Uh, good morning, the the tap the the tap out man, tap out man. Yeah, why cut it now and not wait till the whole design is done? So that was the the uh, version number one of making a patch. That was the way to cut it at the very end. This this way here. I'll show you. So right now it's gonna do the cut line. Um, the reason why is just so it'll be easier to cut. Okay, it's easier to cut. It's easier as a finish, just to cut it right now. And since it's since it's not since it's not hooped, we have access to cut it. So if we have access to cut it, we might as well just cut it. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's go back to the bench here all right so i got this right here okay um what you don't want to do you don't want to take it off the hoop okay so we're just gonna carefully right you don't want to mess anything up i'm just gonna cut four sides right here just so i could pull a little easier All right. Let's see, I'm trying to give you a good angle. All right. Secret, right? Secret of applique um, is just to pull fabric up. Scissors. As long as you got applique scissors, these are uh, the ginger. Okay. Ginger. Um, double double bent scissors all right i'm kind of doing it very quick right now but of course if you're doing it you want to take your time okay so once again i'm working with four millimeter uh sand border so we got pretty safe space to run uh to cut with okay just if you got anything that's kind of hanging out just kind of cut it all right now if you got any you could just blow it all right we got a little stragglers here that's fine it'll get covered up All right, so we cut it okay, right along the line. Let me put it back on. All right, now it's just going to run the border. So it's going to do a uh, zigzag stitch around. So it's holding on pretty good. All right. 
So at that stage, I'm just checking that um, the cut is getting covered up. All right. Uh, and then Crystal, good morning, Crystal. Uh, what's a good way to gauge what stabilizer to use? Uh, it depends. I would say stabilizer depends on uh, the fabric that you're using. So the thinner, the thinner your fabric, the more, the stronger the cut, the cutaway. Okay, because the more prone to puckering. Okay, and the more thicker, then you could get away with something lighter. Okay, uh, sometimes you don't want too much thickness on something light. So there's other types of cutaway, right? There's a uh, performance, pro performance or uh, no show cutaway. So if you're working with something very, very thin, like polo shirt types, then um, you might wanna use specific cutaway used for uh, performance type shirts, all right? Especially like uh, golf polo shirts. All right, always good question. Sometimes you just got to experiment, okay? You got to see uh, what 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 works, okay? Because a cutaway, a specific stabilizer might work for, for a special type of garment, and then it won't work for a different type of garment. So sometimes you just got to kind of, um, you got to uh, experiment. All right. All right, this one here. All right, this is always the question of the week. All right, uh, good morning. So tickled embroidery. Uh, can you explain the method for figuring out how to charge customers for patches? Thanks for all your videos. Yes. All right. All right. Hold on. I, let me pull myself up on this one because. All right. Okay. This is the this is the question. All right. This is the question of all questions. This is the reason why we are here, right? Well, this is the reason why I started an embroidery shop, right? Uh, of course, I started one to have fun and to be creative. But the number one reason why, right, we all do embroidery is to actually make money, right? To make a profit. And it's always the number one question. How much do we charge for for patches? Okay. Um, it's three different, three different, a uh, combination of three different variables, right? Number one variable, most important variable is how much did you spend? Okay. How much did you spend to buy everything, all your materials? For example, if you're selling, let's say we, we break it down to a kindergarten level, right? If you're selling bubble gum, right? Okay. I'm going to keep it very basic just so it could kind of make sense, right? If, if we're selling bu bubble gum and we bought it for, we bought the bubble gum for five cents. All right. We got to charge more than five cents, right? If you charge less than four cents, right, you're gonna lose money. Sometimes in embroidery, we don't we don't kind of write down or we don't account for everything that we spend, or we or we write down everything we think we spent, right? But there's other expenses that kind of that are kind of in the background, right? For example, here you would think making a patch, all, all it takes is twill, cutaway, thread, right? In reality, or or kind of in, in front view, right? You might think, well, all I had to do was pay for a twill, cutaway, thread, right? But in reality, right, there's other expenses that you got to take into account. You got to take what's your monthly expense, right? Your bills, your power, uh, internet, uh, your um, your machine, your monthly payment for your machine, right? Everything else, right? Your hourly, how long did it take you? Right? How long did it take you to create those patches? Okay. How much are you going to pay yourself hourly? All right. So you got to make a you got to make a uh, a breakdown of how much you want to make. Okay. Do you want to make a profit or you don't want to make a profit? Okay. If you do want to make a profit, you gotta you gotta kind of list everything that you're paying for, right? Um, but I would say, right? I would say, me in general, I would charge right single head. We're in a if, if you have a single head or, well, I have a double head, right? But I use my, my this one for flats, okay? Um, home, home embroidery, right? I'm in the, I'm in the anywhere between the 10 to 20, to $20 a patch, okay? Uh, now that's more, I, I, I try to focus on customizing patches, 
right? If there's somebody looking for a thousand of the same patch, they might be better off going with somebody that has a 12 head because they could probably knock it out quicker and cheaper, right? But since we're in a situation where uh, we excel kind of like in the customizing type work, okay? I, if to answer your question, how much I would charge, okay? I would charge 10 or 15 and that would cover my expenses, right? So in order to figure out how much to charge, you kind of, you, you have to know what's your monthly expense. Your true monthly expense, okay? Not just project by project, but how much does it take to keep the, the business running, all right? So kind of that's like, it's kind of a difficult question to answer, but that's kind of like the best way I could get. I would charge 10 to 20, and that's kind of taking into account everything that it costs to kind of keep the lights on here, all right? To keep the business running, all right? Always good question. All right, let's go ahead. Let's take this off the machine. All right. All right, take this off. Got a little fuzzies hanging out here. All right, so this is applique, okay? Reason why we would use applique, okay? Uh, let's say we have scraps, all right, kind of hanging out. If we want our, our patches to be different colors, different, um, different fabric, okay? This would be kind of the easier way to do it, okay? And I'm just gonna kind of Cut it off a little choppy here. I can barely see. All right. But now when you're cutting it, okay, we don't really have the twill to worry about like our first way. Okay. You're still cutting it. Okay. But hold on. I have to be like quiet when I cut or else while I start cutting unnecessarily All right, I was at a weird angle right there. All right, and then of course we get some stragglers out here. So it gives it a real clean look, like you don't really have, like the, the traditional way, the way we did it the first way, since, since we were cutting on twill still, you got a tendency of, to have, um, kind of uh frame but this is just cut away okay all right so let me see all right so it still looks clean all right especially if you put this on a lighter type garment very clean all right this one was here our second way and then here let me go ahead and cut this first one that i showed you so the way we started our day this was the traditional way to do it. Okay, these scissors here, I like them for this type of uh, patches, like long, the ones that go kind of long way. Okay, these are the ginger. These just cut like butter right here. Okay, this one, if you're cutting on twill, you gotta be a little bit more careful. I don't like going too close. 
just so we don't have to worry about cutting yarn. All right, hold on. Let me fix it. All right, let me show you one cool thing right here. I don't think I've used this on a video before, but I do use it. All right, let me show you this right here, right? I don't know if I ever just showed this one here. So this here, right, is like the ultimate lighter right here. So I'm, I'm using this when I got big projects and a lighter is not going to, it's not going to do any justice. See? All right. Move the volume. All right. If you're doing a big run and you're, and you're okay to use uh, tools and you know, you've used tools before. Okay, you could use something like this. Okay, you just gotta be careful with it. But any stragglers in your thread, all right, it just disappears instant. All right. Now let's check it out. So this was using method number one. Okay. Traditional way. I use this probably 90% of the time. Traditional way. Because you're just doing, you could just let the machine run by itself and then cut it at the very end. Right. We're not, we don't have to stop and do anything. So as you can see, it looks pretty cool. It's pretty clean. Okay. Method number two was using our water soluble. And then as you can see, there's zero, zero um, material or fabric on the outside. Okay. I like this one too. Okay. And then method number two or three or applique way, right? We could still, if, if I were to hit that, this, this with the, with the lighter, okay, it would definitely decrease that cutaway that's there. Cause the cutaway is made out of polyester. So it's gonna, it's going to uh, disappear also. All right, let me see. So applique way, okay. So each, each one of these, each of these three methods, they all have their purpose, right? They have their reason why they're so useful. Okay. So depending on what you have, what materials you have, that's really, it comes down, what it comes down to is, um, what materials do you have? Okay. Um, and what, what, what's your quantity for, uh, for your patches? All right. So let, let me know how that came out. All right. Uh, top of my, I just did my first ten dollars a patch job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how much I would charge. And I try to focus on doing custom, custom type patches. That way, uh, if you do charge a premium, okay, there's a purpose for charging a premium because it's a um, it's a customized, right, or a personalized type patch. Uh, yeah, so for this patch, I would charge 10 and I would make it like uh, 
I would put a, a an adhesive on the back, right? I would make it an adhesive, especially if it's a company logo, right? I since I could digitize it, I can I could include the digitizing and all that stuff in the price. All right. All right. Let me see. Uh. All right. Uh, let's see, Barb. I use my Cricut Maker to cut my patch tool shapes. Then I tack down on Badge Master. Then embroider, embroidery. I like the second method, Romero show. All right. Yes. All right. Yes. So you could use your uh, your Cricut or your. Uh, I've used my uh, scanning cut. I got my scanning cut right there. Um, yes, very useful, right? If you just send it out, um, you just pre-cut, right? You have a pre-cut instead of creating the cut lines all right so uh yeah it's another good way to do it all right um and then janet does it the same way yep bar me too all right all right good morning uh cam all right good morning all right let's see all right good morning hector all right how would you do patches that you would like to stow on a garment at a later time with no sand stitch at this time or would you also I, I always put a sand stitch on my on my on my patches yeah always so if if i'm trying to do something for a future time i just create the patch and then bag it up and save it for a later day but all my patches i complete it like when i'm doing a project i would complete it right there and then so i wouldn't wait till later to do the sand stitch i'll just finish finalize it there all right all right, stay unique, printware. All right, thank you very much. Yeah, I think they came out good. All right, and then Marlon, you want to uh, send some peace, love, and positive energy to everyone. All right, appreciate that. All right, and yes, Barb. Uh, no, on uh, using that lighter, right? Yeah, you, that big one, that big lighter. Uh, I would only recommend that if you are very. Uh, if, if you're comfortable with using right tools and power tools and all this crazy stuff or maybe be uh, outside because yeah you don't want you, you don't want to crank up the, the, the volume all the way high because it goes real hot. but if you're doing a big patch order, okay sometimes that lighter it's not gonna hang it's not gonna last a full job if you're doing like 100 patches uh, sometimes you might have to use um, either more lighters or something stronger like that and usually when, we will do all the patches, right? We'll no cleaning. We'll save all the cleaning to the end, and then pull out the butane lighter and right the big one and just kind of knock that out. All right, all right, right. And then uh, Janice likes number two, all right? Method number. I like number two too. Very clean, very easy, straightforward. All right. Uh, I, I would say the main thing on patches is just get everything ready, right? All your have a plan. Okay, where you could, where you're always doing something. Okay, whether you're cutting, setting stuff up, that way you're just moving, right? You're moving along through the whole project. All right, and then just, yep. So so tickled. You have a 90 patch order. All right, just before you go in, right? Just take your time, go over the plan, try to see that your sequencing is all good. All right, once you do that first uh, practice run and everything looks good, you're good to go. All right, you're good to go. All right. And then um, T. Johnson, excuse me if you already mentioned it, but what type of adhesive do you use? So uh, to attach, to, to, to do an iron on, right? Let's say you wanna sell patches and you want the customer just to iron on the, the patch. I use, um, I've used uh, from Tool USA, okay, the P600. Yeah, P600. I'll put it down in the description. Okay, my latest video, my last video, how to sell uh, patches or how to prepare your patches for sale. It has the full breakdown and I'm going to I'm going to list it here. Okay, I'm going to list it here so you can watch it right afterwards. Okay, um, very good one. How I go about right from the heat press and all that, because if, if you want to go that route, very, very straightforward. All right. And then Marisa, appreciate that. Another great Saturday morning class. Yes, very informative, right? I love patches. I'm pretty sure everybody loves patches. And one big, one big thing about patches, right? No matter what niche, no matter what industry, no matter who your customer is, okay, you are always going to be uh, requested to do patches, 
right? Patches is just like every day, uh, not just an American thing, but it's a worldwide thing, right? Everybody loves patches. Uh, that's it's just kind of like a sense of community. All right. So I'm in the Navy. Our whole world revolves around patches, right? Kind of that distinguishes who you are. Okay. Um, status, right? Especially military status. Uh, it's all about patches. So we work with countless, countless of patches. And that's also organization wise, right? Everybody likes to, uh, especially if you work for a very good company, everybody has pride on wearing their company patch or, you know, their, their divisional patch or something like that. Okay. So patches will never go out of style, right? So if you have an embroidery machine, all right, you can never not have customers because people are always going to request patches. And this is my, my last two cents, right? My last two cents would be this is fine, fine, your best way or your favorite way to make patches. That way, when people start requesting patches, all right, you already have your, your tested way of doing stuff. Okay. You're going to have your preferred way of doing stuff. And that way, once a job comes in, Okay, you're quickly on it and you can knock it out, right? Instead of starting from scratch and having to uh, to figure out how to do it, right? Because if you haven't done a patch run and you're in embroidery, all right, it's on its way. Okay, it's on its way. Trust me, it is coming because everybody requests this patches always. All right. All right. Uh, all right, Cedar, appreciate that. All right. Very good Saturday here. Okay. I think my next videos, like this weekend, I want to continue with patches. Uh, if you have any questions or any comments or anything that you think I, I, I should add on some of these um, next videos that I'm doing regarding patches, let me know. Okay, let me know. That way I can include it. But I do want to go heavy, right? I would say uh, I'm going to make preparations from here to maybe August. All right, patch heavy. Okay, go very heavy on patches because starting August to December, just shop wise, that's where we're going heading uh, a lot of patches that we're doing. So I, I want to include that in our uh, classes that we're doing here. All right. Um, all right, Barb, have an excellent weekend. Thank you for always sharing your knowledge here, helping me out, right? When people have questions, all right, you're always there in the background, helping me out. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, Janet, all right. Good looking out. Great, great class. Yep. See so. All right. And Cedar, thank you for your teaching. All right. Um, Tim, appreciate that. All right. Crystal, all right. Thank you very much. All right, Crystal. All right. Appreciate that. Uh, one last thing. One last thing. All right. One last thing. I always say it's the last thing. All right. Uh, I do have links. All right. I have a link to, um, I have an Amazon affiliate link. If you click on it, if 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 you check it out, I, I put down, I have a store an influencer store. I only put down stuff that I use that I actually have in the shop. All right. So if you want to see what type of stuff we have at the shop, uh, I recommend Amazon. If you need something quick, all right, they have like their next day shipping sometimes, right? Some stuff, uh, some stuff you're like in a pinch and you need to get Amazon real quick. All right. I would recommend Amazon. I would use like the other stores. Like if, if you make a list of all the stuff you need to buy, then I would include uh, all stitch, and all those stores, right? But if you go and you see our influencer page and you check it out, all right, um, I always put stuff that we have here at the shop. So if you want to know what we have here, what we use, okay, um, that's what we use there. All right. So, uh, and then a lot of happy Easter, right? Everybody excited for Easter. All right. All right. So thank you for stopping by, everybody. All right. Very good class this week. All right, we're gonna make it even better as we go. All right, so any questions, any comments? If you're on the replay, go ahead and leave your questions in the in the comments down below, and I'll see you next week, same time, right? Every Saturday. All right, peace out, everybody.